on the spot. Sony's here to demo the latest update for the PlayStation 3. Also, we're revving up dirt, shooting through Shadowrun and Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, and relaxing with some New York Times crosswords and Bomberman Live. Where's my spirit dog? We're live and on the spot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to On The Spot, GameSpot's live show we do every Thursday afternoon. We play a whole bunch of games you haven't seen before and generally have a good time. I'm your host, Rich Gallup. Hello, Jeff Gersman. Hi. How are you? I'm great. We got, we got a great show for you today. We have a lineup of games that we are going to see and or play. We do. All right. The game is dirt. Look for it soon. Right now, we're going to toss it over to Ryan Davis. Ryan Davis, special guest. Who you got? I am joined here by Eric Limpel. He is the director for PlayStation Network Operations. Eric, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm well. Now, you guys have just released a brand spanking new firmware update for the PlayStation 3. Yes, we did. Uh, you want to tell us all about it? Sure. What, what it's um, capable of? Well, you know, from the beginning, we've been updating PlayStation 3 with lots of firmware updates since we launched, and we've added features every time. Um, this update's got a lot of great features. There's a ton of stuff in this one, a lot of stuff users have been waiting for, and a lot of just great technology. So let's get to yeah, it. Yeah, let's jump all right, right in. All right, great. So, um, so one of the first things we'll talk about is uh, upscaling. So okay. what we've added this time is upscaling for DVDs as well as original PlayStation games and PS2 games. So now if you've got an HD TV at home, you can watch DVDs, original PlayStation games, and play PlayStation 2 games in up to uh, 1080p if your TV supports that. So uh, let's take a look. So basically it's, it's actually default. It defaults to the uh, on when you get in there. Sorry, I'm in the wrong menu there. Uh, so game settings. So if you go into game settings, you see you've got the PS... PS2 upscaler. You can turn on smoothing, which makes some of the rough edges a little smoother. And that's it. I mean, it usually defaults to on, so you're ready to go. And we'll, uh, we'll go over and check out a game and see if there's you know, any difference. All right, what are we uh, going to be looking gonna, at here? We're uh, check out God of War 2 on the PS2. That I'm seems sure like a good one to sure do. Sure you've heard of that one, <laughs> yeah. So this is the first time we're playing it on here, so we'll just uh, set up a memory card. Create a little virtual memory yeah. card, jumping through the hoops. Just keep that original name. Okay, great. So we're set to go. Launch this. Now, uh, would you say that this has a greater impact on the original PlayStation games or on the PlayStation 2 games? Yes, it's got a greater impact on the original PlayStation games. It makes them look really good. There's a big difference when you play them on the uh, PS3 now with upscaling from when you didn't. So it, I would definitely recommend taking out some of those classics and uh, throwing them in and taking a look at them because you might be surprised. Uh, now, is that, so uh, is this basically like the same thing that, uh, let's say, the, the progressive scan, uh, you know, the, that effect had on certain PlayStation 2 games that's basically just being applied to all of them now, is that exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. But it may be a little better I'm because we are going to 1080p. Okay. Yes, and I think a lot of those were going to 720. So, so here's a look at the opening video. Now, what is the net effect of this here? Uh, like, what, what, what is it actually improving on this picture? I mean, overall, it's upscaling. You know, when you're watching a regular image, um, Prior to this, it would be interlaced, it would be 480i, mm -hmm. now you're at 1080p, so it's, it's making everything sharper. It's sharper, it's crisper. I mean, it, it can't make it you know, totally different. I mean, it is the original source content, but I mean, you can see this is a lot of sharper, a lot sharper, the edges are sharper, and um, it just, you know, overall you get a better experience. And it, it makes a great improvement on movies as well. You okay. can do this with DVDs, so, you know, your current DVDs are, are just at 480. When you throw them into this, they're going up to 1080p if your TV supports that, and it um, looks really nice. Excellent. So, uh, so there's a look at that. We'll exit out of here if you're uh, ready to jump to the next feature. Yeah, let's see what else you got so for us So we've added uh, DLNA compatibility, which is the uh, Digital Living Network Alliance. So basically the PS3 now is part of that, and it's, it's acting as a client. And so you can use any uh, DLNA server. No, which, no. Uh, for the folks at home who maybe aren't familiar, this is, a sure. pretty, this is a pretty huge step for the PlayStation 3 as far as being kind of this media server. Exactly. Uh, you know, content-based device in the living room because this means that you know uh, th these devices are you know PCs, uh, you know Macs, basically anything like that that you're going to be able to connect to now with your your PlayStation 3 and then just serve media off of that. Exactly, you, that's exactly what it is. So basically, if you've got a lot of media on your PC, if you've got photos, if you have music, if you have videos, you can use the PS3 to just transfer them over. But actually, you're just streaming them. You're not actually using your hard drive space. You're streaming them from another room. So if you've got a PC in your bedroom with you know, 2,000 photos on it and your whole music collection, you can use the PS3 to access that PC 
stream that media into a living room, into a home theater, and just you know, have all that stuff at your, at your reach on another system. So it's, it's really easy to set up. You just have to go to the other device, which may be a PC. It works with most DLNA devices. Um, one we were using was Windows Media Player 11. If you've got Windows Media Player 11, you can set that up and then just go on here. So, so for most people that have a PC, uh, this isn't going to require even extra software on that end. This no. is going to be, they already have this capability built in. They just need to configure it. Right. And they may have to update to the latest version of the software, but it won't, okay. it shouldn't cost them anything. Excellent. And uh, then if you go to music or photos or video, you can search for media servers. We're actually unable to get this to work here due to some firewall issues, but, but essentially you search for media servers and we've got a couple. We've got one set up we've, here. We've got one in your office. I don't know if it'll work because we ran into some trouble, but so that's what it'll look like. And it'll basically identify a PC and that, I think that's someone's name who works here. Sure. And, and you know, you click on that. So it's, it's not actually allowing us to access it because that person didn't give us permission. But right. all they would have to do is click a button, give us permission, and we would be able to access all of their music, all of their photos, all of their videos, and start playing them right off the PS3. Uh, what are the limitations as far as the type of, uh, you, you know, you're, you're saying, you know, broadly we're talking about photos, still photos, we're talking about video, we're talking about music. Yeah. Like, what, what, what do you know as far as uh, limitations on the types of videos, like, uh, you know, are, how, how advanced are we going to be able to get here? You know, what sort of stuff are we going to actually be able to view? I mean, it's basically limited to the type of content that the PS3 will play. Okay. So as far as it pertains to video, you're looking at, you know, MP4s, AVIs. When it comes to photos, GIFs, JPEGs, TIFFs, bitmaps. When it comes to music, um, MP3s. I, I believe. Um, so if you've yeah. got like, but if you've got like stuff you bought off the iTunes store, that stuff's probably it, not going it, to. It probably wouldn't work. We haven't tested it yet, okay. um, but we can, you know, it's certainly worth giving it a try, but I, it might not work. Okay. But it works with most compatible formats and it's a, it's a great feature. It definitely Excellent. expands the, uh, you know, the usability of the Absolutely. PS3. Absolutely, getting stuff off of the PC and uh, into the living room. That seems to be a, a big step for everyone. Exactly. Uh, what else have you got here? And uh, while we, we get into that, Rich, you want to start looking for some questions from the folks at home? Sure. I got our very first question. I think it's going to help you uh, guys segue right here nicely. It's from Jared Harrell in Calgary. That's in Canada. Canada, I've heard of that. What kind of uh, PSP connectivity comes with this firmware update? That is a great question. Um, that's exactly where we're going now. So, ah! uh, see, that's perfect. So, it's like um, I knew. So yeah. Why is the host? So, so that's why. So I'll grab my PSP here. And, you know, from the beginning, we've been saying that the PSP was made to work with the PS3. Right. There, you know, there's all sorts of cross-talking going on. As most of you might remember, when we launched the PS3, about a week later, we did a firmware update to the PSP to allow remote play. And what remote play allowed you to do was essentially go on your PSP and stream media saved on your PS3 to your PSP. So again, videos, photos, music, you could do that from anywhere in your house. So, so very cool feature. What we've done in the latest firmware update is expand that even further. And I'll, uh, I'll jump on here. I don't know if the camera will see this. But I'm going to do a, maybe I'll hold it up. Or. Sure, go ahead. So, so we're going to jump down to remote Actually, play. Actually, I'm going to pull it over okay, the shoulder. Okay, so we're going to jump down to remote play. And what we're able to do now is connect remote play over the internet. So you can be anywhere in the world and access the media on your PS3 from your PSP. This is a, a lot like the, the location-free stuff that yes. Sony's been doing so far, but now you don't even need to have that special device. Right, right. As long as it's saved on your PS3, you can access it. Can we do this here? Can uh, we, we, can, this? we can actually do this here. All so right. I'm connecting to remote play now, and it gives you a choice. It's saying via the internet or via the private network. Okay. So we're going to go on via the internet. If you want to turn it a little bit to... Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the stuff. Money. And this is really easy to set up. It requires a one-time sync, and then after that, you're required to put in your PlayStation Network ID just to make sure it's you so that you're syncing up with your PS3. And as long as your PS3 is at home signed onto the network, and oh, we've got an error. Let's, let's try it again. Actually, we're, we're on a private network here. Right? Or, or, yeah, let's, yeah, let's do uh, that there. So we're on the same gang here. So we'll see that public, and let's see where this goes. Voila. Oh, oh you know what? I, I didn't actually set up remote play on the PS3. Aha. So one of, one of the things you do before you leave the house, actually, <laughs> go over to your 